halogenation as a synthetic technique. Before this chapter, we need three, three basic types of reactions. One of them was substitution, where you exchange one leaving group for another. But your substrate has to be something with a leaving group, like an alkyl halide. A plain old alkane doesn't have a leaving group. Another type of reaction we learned was elimination. You treat something that has a good leaving group on it with a base and you end up with an alkene. Again, our alkane has no leaving group. As a consequence, our alkane cannot do substitution nor can it do elimination. A third kind of reaction we knew how to do was addition. Your substrate is an alkene. In the first step, the pi bond of the alkene acts as either a base or a nucleophile. But our alkane has no pi bond, therefore it can do no addition. Thus, before radical halogenation, the alkane was a synthetic dead end. However, now that we have radical halogenation, this is no longer the case, and an alkane is no longer a synthetic dead end. Treating propane with bromine in ultraviolet light gives us about a 90% yield of 2-bromopropane. If we treat that 2-bromopropane with a base, we'll get an elimination reaction and this will give us propene. On the other hand, if we treat our 2-bromopropane with a nucleophile, we get substitution. And there are a variety of directions we can go from either of these. Here's an exercise. What is the correct series of reagents to transform cyclohexane into 3-bromo-cyclohexene? Let's do retrosynthetic analysis. If we look at the product, we see that it has a bromine in the allylic position. That means we could get it from allylic bromination. The reagents we need to accomplish allylic bromination are N-bromosuccinamide in the presence of ultraviolet light, H nu. We could get the cyclohexene by an elimination reaction from a cyclohexyl halide. And the reagent we'd need is just a strong base. We've gone far enough that now we can see our way going forward. To go from cyclohexane to a cyclohexyl halide, all you need to do is radical halogenation. So maybe something like chlorine in the presence of ultraviolet light. So now our first synthetic step, radical chlorination, our second step, elimination, and our third step, allylic bromination and you could draw out your whole synthesis like this. 1, Cl2, H nu, 2, NaOme, and 3, NBS, H nu. Step 1, you wouldn't have to use chlorination, you could do bromination. So your reagent could be Br2 and H nu as well. Step two, you wouldn't have to use sodium methoxide. You could use any non-bulky base, like sodium hydroxide or sodium ethoxide. But you would not use terp butoxide. 
Actually, it wouldn't make a difference, except that tert-butoxide is more expensive.